Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we have another top 10 list for you. This is going to be all about uh, people who are new to the hobby, yep. right? Yeah, this weekend, uh, June 3rd, I believe, the mm -hmm. first Saturday of June every year is International Tabletop Day. And that was a really big day for us when first getting into the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, we just heard about it and then we decided to go to a friendly local game store. We picked up a bunch of different games and that kind of set us off on our journey to really, really enjoy all the different things that we love about this hobby. That's right. So one thing that uh, going to conventions last year taught us is that there are a lot of people who watch our channel who are very new to the hobby. And a lot of people ask us, uh, what would you recommend if we're just starting out? Uh, what games should we kind of look into to start a collection? Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to give you 10 recommendations for games to start your collection. But first, we have a sponsor of today's mm -hmm. video. Today, uh, this top 10 list is sponsored by the World Series of Board Gaming. And if you're not familiar with the World Series of Board Gaming, this is the the second annual board gaming tournament mm -hmm. that's going to be held in Las Vegas, Nevada from September 24th through the 28th. There's somewhere around $40,000 in prize money to be won. There are a number of different ticket types depending on how many tournaments you want to compete in. There's also stay and play packages which are limited in quantity. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in any of this, there's going to be links down below which you can check out at your leisure. Um, this again is going to be held in the late September 2023 mm -hmm. in Las Vegas, Nevada. And one thing to clarify, uh, that that we kind of misspoke about in our last video is that in order to win the main tournament, there are ring events. And in the ring events, you are playing multiple rounds of the same game. So if you choose one of the ring events to enter, you're playing about five rounds in one day. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to move on to the semifinals to be eligible for the main prize money, you have to win your ring event. Right. So you have to basically win five rounds of the same game. Somebody has to do it. That's true. And if you win your ring event, then you move on to the semi final where you compete in a different game right. and if you win that then you move on to the finals where you compete in a third game. Mm -hmm. And the winner of that is going to uh, be the ultimate winner of the World Series of Board Gaming. So again, if you think that's you, potentially, then uh, we've left all the details in the description below. And thank you again so much to the World Series of Board Gaming for sponsoring this video. All right, so now moving on to our list. Uh, again, International Tabletop Day is happening this weekend, so I don't know if uh, people celebrate it anymore. <laughs> I know when we were first getting into the hobby, uh, the board gaming stores were all into it. Mm -hmm. and. That was literally how we got into board gaming. We went to our local one. We participated in some events. We picked up Just Desserts. <laughs> just which Desserts. Is... I think we got The Downfall of Pompeii. We got yeah. a couple other little card games. Just stuff that we just liked the name. We liked what the box looked like. We mm -hmm. knew nothing about it. I think we barely knew about BGG and how yeah. useful of a tool BGG was at the time. Uh -huh. So we were just buying stuff based off of looks. And we really, really fell in love with the hobby after that day. Yeah, seeing the collection, the entire uh, sort of catalog of games that they had there, as well as just the excitement of everybody around us, mm -hmm. really got us hooked. Yep. So I would suggest maybe looking into what's going to be going on this weekend at your local friendly gaming store and trying to support them as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So first of all, of course, we have some runner ups and I'm cheating a bit. I know Naveen has his own runner up. Do you want to go first? <laughs> uh, yeah, my well, OK, my runner up is so the way I see it, if we're going to create a collection, uh -huh. I want a bunch of different types of games that have different mechanisms, right? You don't want to yeah. have just the same types of card games times 10 because then you'll have a wide variety. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> so Monique is not the biggest area control fan. Right. I... I tolerate it to appreciate it in that kind of range. Okay. And the game for me that is on my uh, kind of runner-up list that I knew didn't make our top 10 would be Ethnos. Mm. Ethnos plays a high player count. Uh, turns can be snappy. Um, and it has a very strong area control element. Uh, and I think that is a fantastic game to have in your collection. And a fantasy theme. And a fantasy theme. That game was really popular when it first came out, and then mm -hmm. it sort of, over the years, just quieted out. Sometimes you can get games. into a point where the cards do not kind of just flow as easily as they should. Right. I think they could fine-tune some rules there to make mm -hmm. it a little bit better, but nevertheless, I still enjoy that game. Nice. For me, I'm going to be cheating a little bit because I am going to give you 10 runner-ups. Okay. Um, I really just wanted to name these games. <laughs> these were the games that were on every list when we first got into the hobby because mm -hmm. we did the same thing. When we first started out, we went online and looked up 10 best <laughs> gateway games or 10 games to start a collection, and these were the 10 that were recommended over and over and over again. So... They were Catan, King of Tokyo, Ticket to Ride, Seven Wonders, Small World. That's area control. Area control. <laughs> yep. Power Grid, Agricola, 
Carcassonne, Dead of Winter, and Takenoko. Mm. Those were 10 games that we all, and these are all uh, before 2015. All before 2015, right. and surprisingly, two of these games I have not played ever. That's yeah. why these are your runner-ups. <laughs> I've actually never played Carcassonne. Okay. Shocking, I know. That's like OG Tyler. I know. Another one that you can throw in there would technically be Stone Age. Another I've never played Another game that. I've actually never played as well. Uh, and then Power Grid. I've never played Power Grid. I've been told by so many people that I would enjoy it. It's just very long, so I feel like nobody <sighs> wants to play it with me. It's very long and it's very it. math. Okay, that's like it. math, the board game. Yep. So <laughs> if you're interested in that, uh, check out Power Grid. One more that I, I left out, which is kind of a tragedy, is a worker placement game called Lords of Waterdeep. That game was really, mm. really, uh, really going strong when we I, first got into the hobby. I think the thing about that particular game, it looks intimidating when you look at the box. Surprisingly, when we were in Brussels last year during mm -hmm. our Essence Spiel uh, vacation trip, it was in that Airbnb. Like, they had two games there. It was like a small little game of Uno, and then when you pulled out the drawer, the rest Lord of it was Deep. Lords of Waterdeep. And we're like, what the heck? <laughs> It in a really random cool. Airbnb. They didn't market it. They didn't advertise it. It wasn't why we chose that place, but yeah. it was a big shock for us when we saw Lords of Waterdeep Maybe in there. someone left it there. Maybe. Maybe they were like, this is too, too big. Too big to travel with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there, Airbnb. <laughs> but it is a fantastic game. It That's is. like, if you want uh, your sort of first worker placement, it's not even, like, you could play that forever. That's a great yeah. game. And I think the expansions, I've never played with the expansions. I heard expansions make it even more gamery, if you will. Yeah, so... That's Lords of Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we cheated a bunch. That That is a ton of runner-ups. But there you go. If you're interested in more past this list, then we would recommend any of those. Mm -hmm. So are you ready to get into our list? Let's do it, yes. All right. Now, these are games that we tried to pick that are more recent, so within the past five years. We also have a few disclosures depending on games that we've covered on our channel for sponsorships, and mm -hmm. we'll discuss those as we get there. Sure. Okay, number 10. This is a game that came out back in 2018. Monique and I have actually covered it on the channel. Mm -hmm. It's designed by S.J. McDonald as well as Shem Phillips, and it is called Architects of the West Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, this game is a worker placement resource management game uh, in which you are basically putting yourself into positions where you're going to potentially be knocked out and put into jail. <laughs> um, it's a very fun, interactive game. We really, really enjoy it. I think it plays best at three and higher, even though we've played it at two players with the kind of two-player variants. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, a simple kind of concept Euro game. This is why it's a, a fantastic one to start in your collection. It has a lot of replay value to it, as well as other expansions, so it's an expandable game as well. Yes, there's a lot of a, a player interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the point of the game, by the way, putting yourself into position to go into jail. Like, well, you don't want I'm that to happen. You can <laughs> do that. So you have to be you're, very smart about what you're doing. Yeah, you're trying to score points in different ways. You're building the church or so. You're gaining more um, sort of workers. It's a, it's a nice foundation for the rest of the West Kingdom trilogy, as mm -hmm. well as just other games that Garp Hill Games uh, tend to put out, because they, they follow the same kind of symbology and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yes. But this is probably the most uh, accessible one, definitely out of the West Kingdom trilogy. But uh, it also just uh, is good worker placement and resource management, just mm -hmm. like Naveen said. Yeah, there's high interaction in this game. I mm -hmm. think, uh, especially when you're getting started in the hobby, sometimes I, I, I felt personally when I got started, I liked that interaction. Mm -hmm. As I developed more of kind of my tastes, I could go with multiplayer solitaire, something like Paladins of the West Kingdom, where I can mm -hmm. just look down at my board, look at the central board and say, okay, I'm doing this this thing and kind of like paying attention to you as an aside. But yeah. definitely when getting into the hobby, that fun, interactive with kind your of friends. with your friends, that was definitely right. a, a high priority for me. Yes, exactly. And so for the rest of the list, we tried to choose games that have relatively low rules overhead, but high fun factor and generally high um, interaction. Mm -hmm. Things that you can teach to uh, gamers and non-gamers alike. So right. if you if you want to try to get your friends into the hobby as well, then hopefully these games will do it. Yep. And they range quite a bit in terms of heaviness rating. So we'll discuss uh, what the heavier games are when we get to them. Mm -hmm. So that is number 10, a game that is still in our collection architects of the west kingdom mm -hmm. all right moving on to our number nine our number nine is a game that was designed by john declare and published by aeg also in 2018 mm -hmm. that is uh i think that was a big year for games like this sure, yeah. and it is called space base yeah so space base is a uh, crap style dice rolling game mm -hmm. where you have a tableau of of cards it's, it's i believe it's your space station they're numbered one to twelve mm -hmm. numbered yep. one to twelve and you're just trying to score 40 points and so each turn you have a certain amount of income that you can use to buy more cards to upgrade the cards that are in your tableau mm -hmm. 
every turn, the active player is going to roll the dice. And so depending on what they roll, you can get benefits depending on what is at that spot in your tableau, right. yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. You get passive benefits yes. uh, depending on what the results are of somebody else's die roll. So right. you're constantly invested in what other people are rolling, hence mm -hmm. why I we enjoyed this game is because you're not just rolling die just for yourself and then you're waiting three turns for it to get back around to you. Right. It's sort of uh, like Catan in that sense or Machikoro, which mm -hmm. is another game that was really popular when we were getting into the hobby, uh, because they all share that common, someone's rolling dice on every turn, turn yep. and you're always invested. Right. So the thing about Space Base, though, is you are upgrading your uh, tableau uh, because there are only certain cards in your tableau that will give you benefits when you're rolling the dice, mm -hmm. and then the benefits when other people are rolling are different, sometimes uh, lesser, I the, guess. Typically lesser, um, yeah. but if you build out fast enough and, and, and good enough, you can start getting really good passive benefits. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of like saying like, I really hope you roll a nine on your turn so that I can get these benefits, you know? And then yeah. there's kind of that table talk that goes on like, well, I really hope I don't roll a nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it, it's one that uh, every time I play it, I still have not gotten bored of it. Uh, every time I play it, I I find that I want to take more chances by mm. trying to take the lower probability rolls. I've actually seen somebody win by just really hitting hard on the 12. So if yeah, you're yeah. familiar with this game, they just stacked up as many benefits on their 12 and right. they actually pulled off a win doing it that way. So that, that was really is, exciting. That's the thing that's really exciting potentially about Space Space. It really, so the game experience really depends on what happens in the game uh, and the way that you play it. Because obviously the higher probability rolls will not innately give you good returns, but you can kind of uh, program your tableau in a way that sort of whenever you roll a higher probability roll gets you the benefit that's to its right Inside, and then yeah. that will chain to its right so mm -hmm. you end up getting the the sweeter stuff mm -hmm. i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> but it's yeah. all about sort of uh, catering your tableau there are multiple expansions for space base and it is definitely one that you can play with gamers and non-gamers alike yep. so anyway that is number nine space base so we've talked about a worker placement and resource management game. We've mm -hmm. talked about a dice chucking crap style game. Every collection needs at least one abstract strategy game. And this one came out back in 2017, designed by Michael Kiesling and published by Plan B. This is called Azul. Yes. Now, Azul was released, like I said, in 2017. And that was the very first year that Monique and I ever attended Essence Spiel. Mm -hmm. um, this was one of the biggest releases, I want to say, of that year. Yeah. Uh, every single huge. time we went to the booth, we really wanted to demo this game we had no idea what it was about but we always saw massive crowds of people there and there was kind mm -hmm. of a buzz about the game at essence spiel everybody walking around had azul in their in their bag mm -hmm. like people were just buying it just <laughs> and then after a while it made you want it because you could see it everywhere yeah the psychological marketing there was, it was very <laughs> psychological we we're like we every time we went by this booth it had a very prominent location we try to go we try to uh, get it played mm -hmm. just could not get an opportunity to kind of sneak in there unless yeah. we wanted to wait yeah, and it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So in Azul, you are building out a wall, a wall, a Portuguese style Portuguese wall, wall mosaic. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. it's so the patterns of the tiles are really, really nice, and the the quality of the tiles are are really perfect for mm -hmm. the game. And so the way the game works is everybody has a game a mat, and you're trying to fit the tiles on the left side of the mat where it shows certain uh, numbers, numbers of tiles that can exist in each row. And on your turn, you're gonna be choosing one of the, uh, the circular <laughs> mats in the middle of the table that has four tiles on it. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna take all of one color. And those tiles you have to place on one of the rows in your left side of your playing board and the rest of the tiles go into the center. Uh, so if ever you have to take some tiles and you don't have a spot for them, they go onto your factory floor and those are negative points. Right. Yeah, this one's highly interactive also in the sense that you you're constantly looking around and saying, well, Monique can't take any of these red tiles, so I'm going to leave the red tile for her because she has no legal placement. Yeah. I'm going to take these two black tiles, and then she's going to be stuck with this. It happens uh, to me all the time. It scales very well at two, three, and four yeah. players. The game never, for me, never overstays its welcome. Mm -hmm. It's over at just the right amount of time. It mm -hmm. plays in, I would say, about roughly 30 minutes as long as people are making kind of fairly quick decisions. That's why it's, it's sort of perfect for a uh, 10 games collection, I guess, mm -hmm. because I... Higher player interaction, very, very quick game and low rules ever overhead. Mm -hmm. And it's very aesthetically pleasing. It you know, you that. look at it and it automatically intrigues you. Mm -hmm. And now there are multiple versions of Azul. There's the chocolate version, which mm -hmm. we don't have, but I know you really want. I, <laughs> I want to say it's just the same thing, but just kind of reskinned a little bit. But that's the whole chocolate. <laughs> yeah. appeal. Yeah. 
So that is our number eight game on this list. That is Azul. All right, moving on to number seven, we have our roll and write of choice, or better yet, our flip and write. Yep. This is a game that was also released in 2018. It's designed by Benoit Turpin and published by Blue Cocker Games, and it's a game called Welcome To. Welcome To. Yes. yes. This Good is fun. a game all about uh, <laughs> designing or creating the map of your neighborhood. Yes. Right? It's Welcome a flip, to neighborhood. It's a flip and write. Yeah. So you basically uh, are trying to complete different uh, public objectives mm -hmm. by encircling different types of neighborhoods by building fences and essentially filling in uh, one of three different streets in your neighborhood in ascending order. You can never have numbers kind of back to back unless you do another little like a secret thing <laughs> that you can do in the game technically. Yeah, the way that the game works is there's a deck of cards that you split into three and then you flip them over. One side has a, a number and the other side has some kind of a, a benefit. Ability, and so yeah. uh, each round, you're going to simultaneously choose a number that's paired with an ability. Mm -hmm. And so the abilities are going to be stuff like building fences, like Naveen said, building parks, making, a pool. uh, making pools, increasing the value of certain uh, sizes of subdivisions of houses, mm -hmm. I guess. And then there are also these public objectives. So Yeah, this one can play technically an unlimited amount of players yeah. because nobody's actually taking anything and taking anything away from each other. Mm -hmm. It's really about just how efficient can you uh, do the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. We've actually covered this one on the channel as a mm -hmm. play along. Yeah. So if you are interested in that, I'll leave a link up here where you can compete against us and let us know <laughs> how you did. I'm not very good at this game, uh, but there's also an implementation and board game arena mm -hmm. that we play against each other. We do, yeah. And Naveen is strikingly good at Welcome To for some reason. That's but it's on the list. This is a game, this is one of our uh, favorite flip and write, roll and write games ever. Mm -hmm. And a great one if you're starting a collection because, like Naveen said, it plays an unlimited number of people. And it is, it's fairly thinky. It's like a really involved sort of uh, flip and write, but not yep. too much, right? And there's technically, like, every single time you play, there is an optimal and ideal set of choices that you have to make from turn <laughs> to turn to turn right because you're just competing against each other with mm -hmm. the same decision space the so same options the same options yeah mm -hmm. also there is now uh, welcome to the moon which is kind of a step up so this is a good stepping stone game that you can then branch off to all other um, roll and rights or flip and rights that are out there yeah there are a lot of different expansion maps mm -hmm. so if you want different themes you can try other ones um, I will say welcome to the moon is more of a leap up <laughs> that's a hard yeah version of this game leg day up but uh if you've never played welcome to highly suggest you try it mm -hmm. and so that is our number seven welcome to moving on to our number six game on the list here this is one that came out back in 2022 one of the newer ones on this list mm -hmm. it's uh published by cardboard alchemy as well as designed by manny vega and it is a game called flamecraft now monique and i have uh, done a sponsored video of this before so if mm -hmm. you are interested in how it's played in a gameplay we'll leave a link up here as well and also for full disclosure purposes this mm -hmm. is our first disclosure game on the list but we decided to keep the list as accurate as possible and not to disqualify games that we've been sponsored to do sure. so just yeah. just so you know Mm -hmm. Now, the main mechanism of this game is it is a worker placement game where you're trying to gather different resources so that you can fulfill different orders. Mm -hmm. uh, you are kind of living in this dragon fantasy cute world yeah. where you're basically <laughs> going around to different market stalls and trying to perform different things like uh, collecting resources or trying to charm, again, charm yeah, <laughs> the locals. <laughs> and uh, basically, you're trying to score the most amount of points like most games are. Mm -hmm. And we chose this title for this list because the rules overhead is relatively low mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of strategic decision making in the game plus the artwork is very inviting to new players mm -hmm. a lot of people love it for the aesthetics of the game that, that's undeniable right yep. uh, from the actual physical illustrations to the actual components of the game and the mat it's mm -hmm. like a mat that you roll out on the table it is very inviting for all ages and you can play like a simpler version of the game for younger gamers but there's also a, an option for a different deck if you want a little bit more of a meteor game mm -hmm. there's also this kind of element in higher player counts especially especially when uh, you have to be kind to your opponents. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to be like, I have to give a buck to somebody. All right, you're not doing too well. I'm going to give it to you. So uh, there is that interaction once again. Also, the forced kind of interaction in the fact that it's a worker placement game. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people will block spots that you need to go to. So it's kind of that, like I said, forced interaction. So And just the friendliness of the overall atmosphere of the game make it one for this list. Mm -hmm. So that is our number six. That is Flamecraft. All right, moving on to number five. This is a game that was released in 2021, designed by Randy Flynn and published by Flat Out Games, and it's a game called Cascadia. Mm -hmm. So this is a part of a trilogy of tie-laying games. There's Calico, Cascadia, and 
Verdant. Verdant? Verdant. Although Verdant's not tiling. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. That's what you <laughs> but said. But it's yeah. at this like puzzly sort of uh, game design. Um, they're not by the same designers. But of the three, I, I really kind of wanted to choose Calico, but I felt like Cascadia was the most accessible. Mm -hmm. So if you've never played this game before, this is a game that we've done a playthrough of in the past. Um, you're basically trying to build out a uh, an ecosystem, ecosystem? Yeah. Uh, for animals to live. The game comes with different types of animals that are all uh, sort of color-coded, as well as different scoring conditions, depending on the animals. The turn structure is very simple. You just take an animal, as well as a tile, mm -hmm. and you add it to your ecosystem. And you pretty much do that over and over again until the end of the game. So rules overhead-wise, it is quite low. So it's a very accessible game, and it's beautiful, mm -hmm. especially at the end of the game once all players have their own ecosystems built. And it's really interesting to try to meet all those different scoring conditions. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do them all, uh, because you're, you're going to see things that are available to draft, and mm -hmm. you're going to think like okay i can maybe maybe get this done maybe get that done but you can only do one thing on your turn and maybe that tile that you were eyeing for the second draft won't be there for you mm -hmm. and um so you just kind of have to play this kind of gambling game almost like will i be able to get as much meat out of this kind of uh the scoring criteria that i'm trying to do on the outset of the game yeah it is quite strategic you can potentially do it all <laughs> it's not as not uh it's not as bernie as calico calico you really you really have to get lucky to mm -hmm. do it all calico kind but, of compresses you yeah but with cascadia there are so many different ways to score that you're really just trying to maximize your ecosystem over and over again mm -hmm. until the end of the game so if this sounds interesting to you and you'd like to learn more about it we've left a link to our playthrough video up there which you can always check out and so that is our number five cascadia our number four, every single board game collection needs at least one party game. Wow. This one came out in 2018, designed by Ludovic Rowdy, as well as Bruno Sauter, and published by Repos Production. It is called Just One. Just One is one of my favorite um, party games um, of all time, really. It's been mm. out for five years. I've been playing it for five years. My family absolutely loves it. Um, and it is basically a game where you are trying if you're in the hot seat, you're trying to have everybody else give you clues so you can guess what one of five different words are on a specific card. Mm -hmm. People are going to secretly write down a word to try to help tie back into the word that you have randomly selected. Mm -hmm. You obviously don't know which word you've selected. Everybody else does. And the trick here is if anybody uh, in the group that's trying to help you guess has the exact same word, then they're going to cancel each other out. And when I open my eyes to see all these different clues, I'm only going to be left with what is left to try to come up with that just one word mm -hmm. that is on my card. So you're trying to be clever about mm -hmm. the clues that you give by trying to foresee what other people might write because you obviously want to have as many clues as possible, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the whole gist of just one. It's It can be pretty punishing. If you play it the way that the rule book is written, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like the SATs, right? Like if you yeah. make a guess, but you get it wrong, then you, you remove the card and an extra one. Right. It's fun to be both the guess, at least in my opinion, it's fun to be both the guesser as well as the people that are giving the clues. Mm -hmm. um, it always feels kind of <laughs> like you feel the pressure if everybody has been going as the guesser and everybody's getting it correct. And you know, oh. you're like fourth or fifth <laughs> and you're like... I don't want to be the one person that gets this wrong. And then yeah. you kind of close your eyes and right. you just kind of hope and pray that you're going to be able to figure out what they're trying to tell you. Yes. And for that reason, uh, Naveen, this is one of Naveen's favorite party games. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily mine. I think it's great. But I get so nervous being in the hot seat. <laughs> like, God, I'm going to be the one who gets this wrong, you know? So uh, if you want alternative party games, since Naveen made a big claim saying that every collection needs one. At least one. Um, I really enjoyed the crypto. That's another one that we talk about a, a lot. One, yeah. But that has a little bit more of a complicated uh, rule set. So it might not be kind of like first collection. We debated friendly. putting it on this list, but that, that rules overhead can be a little bit uh, can be, too much. Yeah. It can be kind of just weird to figure out. Mm -hmm. Monikers is always a hit if you don't mind doing like charades and yeah, stuff too. I love that's, monikers too. That's one that we bring around a lot. Mm -hmm. um, code names, which is one that I actually don't, don't like. <laughs> Nick doesn't like code names, but you tolerate code name pictures. I like code names pictures. And code names duet is pretty good too. I, I, re I do like code names duet, but code names, I cannot deny the popularity of that game. That's why we didn't even include it on the list. And finally, two rooms Rooms and a boom. Mm. If you have a very large group, two rooms and a boom, um, I would recommend always. But anyway, this was our number four, <laughs> just one. Sorry.
All right, moving on to our number three. This is our next uh, semi-disclosure of sorts. Uh, it's a game that was designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and published by Stonemaier Games in 2019. Mm -hmm. And of course, I am referring to Wingspan. Yep. <laughs> the sensation Wingspan, right? <laughs> Um, now, this is a little bit of a disclosure because I helped produce the Wingspan Asia uh, tutorial video on Watch It Play, right. just so you know. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, this is a game that we've talked about a lot on our channel. Um, it is, it, it, it's been highly reviewed uh, over the years. It's mm -hmm. one of the, the biggest selling, it's got to be one of the biggest selling games, right? Yeah, it's pretty popular. Yeah. Um, it's an engine building style game, mm -hmm. which is themed around birds. And you're basically uh, playing over the course of four rounds trying to collect different birds and uh, not feed them, but you have to, you have to pay food to <laughs> attract these birds. You house them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't feed them. Yeah, no, you pay food that these birds desire yeah. to attract them into your tableau. Yes, and, this is, this is yeah. a, a card-driven game. Engine and the cards, building game. The cards have, uh, they're all bird cards, and they have like a food cost as well as a power. Each player has their own mat, and uh, there are three different types of terrain, and those are the areas where you can play your birds to. Mm -hmm. So the type of terrain that they can be played on is going to be on the card themselves. Yep. And so all of the action types are also listed on your player mat. So it's going to be stuff like playing a bird card to your player mat or getting oh, more food from the bird, bird feeder food, so that yeah. you can continue to play more bird cards. Mm -hmm. And once the bird is on your player mat, um, every time you choose the action that's associated with that row, then you get to uh, potentially activate their ability every time you take that action. Yep. So that is where the engine building aspect comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, to tell you the truth, this is a game in the when we the very first time we played it. It was a game that we really had no business enjoying because I actually did not enjoy my first first maybe second play of it. <laughs> Naveen got angry. <laughs> he came home. I get angry. Really angry. I w I did find myself, and this is a kind of a potential danger of this game yeah. you could find yourself just chasing the wrong food with the wrong birds yeah so like yes. the food that's in the bird feeder when it's your turn is not one that's available to any of the birds that are out there mm -hmm. and or the ones in your card so you're just kind of like okay i this i i'm kind of stuck and i found myself just kind of chasing my own tail like yeah. this and then all of a sudden the game ended yes that's, same thing with just yeah. the cards not synergizing you know yeah. that that's always going to be a risk anytime you play a card driven game mm -hmm. and when i mean card driven games i'm talking about games like terraforming mars or even a game like Ark Nova, sure. anything that is like really dependent on you finding the cards that you need. Mm -hmm. So that's always going to be a risk. But in general, this is a game that we've taught to so many uh, non non gamers, mm -hmm. uh, gamers who are new to the hobby, including your sisters, uh, yeah. including my sisters, my mm -hmm. cousin, and they all have really enjoyed it. And it just, uh, I, I feel like it has a lot of good strategic depth to it mm -hmm. that will make you think like, huh, what what more can I try? Right. That's out there, right? Sure. So it, it is the perfect strategy game, I think, to to be in a first time collection especially. Mm -hmm. It is a bit heavier than some of the games that we've mentioned on this list, so just keep in mind. But still, I think the rules overhead is fairly reasonable. Sure. So that is our number three, Wingspan. All right, the penultimate game on our list. This one came out back in 2016 and published by Renegade Games, designed by Paul Denon, and it is called Clank. Mm -hmm. Now, this kind of is a broad one for us. We'd say all different Clank games could kind of fit this category. Mm -hmm. It is kind of a deck-building, push-your-luck dungeon-crawling game where you're basically going to dive into the depths of a dungeon, try to collect some loot, and try to get the heck out of there <laughs> before everything caves in on you. Right. Uh, that is the... That is the basic concept of all of the different clanks that you'll see. Yep. Now, this is our final disclosure. Uh, we did do a uh, sponsored playthrough of Clank Catacombs, specifically right. on Watch It Played, mm -hmm. which I think is the only version of Clank that That's you've That's the tried. only one I've played, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I do want to play Clank Legacy really bad because everyone highly recommends that one. Yes, even just as a legacy game. That mm -hmm. one's one of the, the more highly rated uh, legacy games out there. Yep. Um, I've played, I think it was the original Clank, before uh, trying Clank Catacombs. Because then there's like Clank in Space, I want to say. Yeah, which... not that. I don't think you've played that one. Actually, I played a Clank that has spider webs. <laughs> so if you are if you know Clank, you'll probably know which one I'm talking about. And the reason why we chose Clank for this list is because we needed a push your luck game. With deck building. With yeah. deck building. We needed a deck, a deck builder as well as a push your luck kind of game. And Clank is wildly successful for good reason. Mm -hmm. um, it is exhilarating trying to go down into the dungeon, try to get as much as you can and push your greediness <laughs> and to try to determine like, okay, when is a good time to stop? Yeah. Yeah. Right, like you're constantly fighting your morals. Like, do I try to go for it? The, the whole point of this game is to score the most amount of points, and I'm only going to do that if I continue to be greedy. Yep. But if I don't make it back to the top before I get knocked out by this dragon, then it, it's all for nothing, right? Yeah, and it is interactive because you're watching. Like, okay, 
Monique's in the depths. Mm-hmm. I think I'm safe here. So you're kind of paying attention always to like what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. There's also um, the different cards that you're going to try to acquire to deck build. Yeah. Uh, so you're constantly like aware of like what cards are other people taking. And so when I played uh, the, the version that that uh, that the one that I've played catacombs. It, catacombs, I was definitely like engaged in every single person's turn, not just in what I was doing. Right, right, right. And that's going to be the same for all versions of Clank. For the push your luck genre, it was between Clank or Quacks of Quedlinburg, which yeah. is another a really successful, really popular uh, push your luck game. Mm -hmm. But that one has like a, I think it's bag building. I've only played Quacks a couple of times. It's not like, not super my favorite game. Um, I don't mind it, but (laughs) it is really, really popular. So if you like that genre of games, I also recommend uh, trying out Quacks. Sure. So that is our number two game on the list. That is Clank. And finally, moving on to the number one game on our list. This is a game that was designed by Min and Elwin and published by CGE back in 2020. And it is the hugely successful The Lost Ruins of Arnak. Mm -hmm. Now, this game is the heaviest game on this list. It might not be for everyone. If you know you kind of want to stick with like the, the lighter, more uh, high, high fun factor uh, kind of games that play quicker, mm-hmm. then I would probably not suggest this. But for anybody who's more into uh, kind of building a strategy type collection, right. this is definitely one you want to check out. Uh, in this game, you're basically putting out your workers and exploring this new island. In territory. The ruins. We'll call it ruins, yes. <laughs> yes. The ruins, yes. Yeah, you're exploring Arnak, you're trying to uh, fight monsters, you're collecting resources in order to advance on the right side of the board, uh, which I believe track. is the temple track. Yeah. You're also deck building. Mm-hmm. So this has a deck building mechanic to it, but it's not uh, it's not your typical fair in terms of deck building. Yeah, it's deck building with worker placement mm-hmm. and resource management yeah. with a little bit of tracks going on. Yeah, and it has multi-use cards. So it mm-hmm. has a lot of different types of mechanisms all kind of put into one, but all sort of like lightly used that it's not it's not super heavy in mm-hmm. terms of the gameplay. Uh, there is a little bit of rules overhead, but it's fairly straightforward. And after playing this sort of game, this will lead you, I'm sure, into Down a lot of different different paths. Yeah, uh, different paths of mm-hmm. games. There's also a couple of expansions that are out. Uh, I think one that was just recently announced, announced and then mm-hmm. one that's definitely out that has asymmetric leaders, which we've played with, mm-hmm. and I really liked yeah, playing with that. And you don't need to be an expert at this game or anything in order to play with those those leaders. Mm-hmm. But overall, I think this is a great one to at least try for strategy gamers. Uh, It seems like there's a lot going on, but the actual tempo of the game is really nice because Mm -hmm. on your turn, you're really just doing one thing. Right. But you can kind of, you have to kind of roll with the punches Mm -hmm. is what it seems. Yeah, I personally like this game at three and four players at the higher player counts just Mm -hmm. because it kind of opens up the board because it's kind of a discovery aspect of the game where Mm -hmm. at the very beginning, you've kind of landed on this beach and there's not these other spots. So as the rounds go on and players start to go on a little adventure, down into the ruins Mm -hmm. more action spaces are going to open up and then it kind of just opens up different combinations of things ultimately you're trying to collect resources so you can turn them in for different things right and we did do a playthrough of this but it was a long time ago with our older camera technological setup if you want to see how uh, the kinds of improvements that we've made to our setup since back then then you can check out that video but Mm -hmm. otherwise i don't necessarily uh, recommend it Mm -hmm. and so that is our number one the lost ruins of arnak we cheated a bunch yeah. In this I list, think we gave this like was, 24 games or yeah, something. No, more because we yeah. started with the 10. Man, we've yeah. mentioned so many games on this list. There's a lot of good um, ones out there. There are a lot of good games yeah. out there that have been released within the past 10 years, I would say. It's all mm-hmm. about finding them. And a lot of times you can find them in the, the secondhand market for much cheaper than retail. Mm-hmm. So uh, I hope this list was helpful to you. Please, if you have any recommendations for games that you've played that you think would, would be perfect for um, you know 10 games to start your collection with, leave us a comment down below because there are entire genres of games that we didn't even include. We didn't really go into minis. We no didn't fighting. do narrative, storytelling games, no. or f- exactly war games, fighting, combat. So, uh, Or your traditional area control style games. Yes, because those are, those are genres that we typically don't uh, have that much experience in. And so if you have any recommendations, we would love to hear from you. Well, there you have it. That is our list. Thank you so much to the World Series of Board Gaming for helping sponsor this video. If you are interested in the World Series of Board Gaming, there is a link down below, which you can check out all the details at your leisure. And thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.